This program is being provided by the 15 members of the Vancouver Educational Telecommunications Consortium, TV Etc. The world doesn't stop moving, changing, and growing. Neither does education. Vancouver Public Schools presents the 2011 We Learn Technology Showcase. And welcome to We Learn Technology Showcase 2011. I'm Colleen Nelson. And I'm Chad Young. For the next half hour, we're going to show you how students in Vancouver Public Schools are using technology to learn. We're coming to you from Skyview High School, where parents, teachers, and students are getting their hands on some cutting-edge technology. There are simply too many exhibits for us to show you all of them in just a half hour, but we're sure going to try. We have full team coverage for you, including two student reporters. But let's start with VPS TV Studios' Nick Bowl, who has a little more on this event. Nick? Thanks, guys. You know, this is the second year for the We Learn event after last year's event at Hudson's Bay High School. But this year, the school district has planned it to be even bigger. There are more than 50 booths and exhibits demonstrating cutting-edge educational techniques, all using technology. And new this year are training sessions for parents and teachers. For mom and dad, a class on how to keep their kids safe on the internet, and also a way to keep up with the district's new math standards. For teachers, the district is offering introductory classes on software they can use with their students. It's just starting to fill up here at Skyview High School, but we're going to be talking to people throughout the evening. But for now, let's go over to Rebecca Schuler, our student reporter, who's at an exhibit that's going to get a lot of attention tonight. Rebecca? Thanks, Nick. I'm here with Phil Hayes. Hello, Phil. Hi. What is the technology that you're presenting tonight? Well, tonight we're showcasing our students' uh, after-school robotics program. We're a FIRST robotics team. FIRST stands for, for the inspiration and recognition of science and technology. So we're trying to get more kids interested in science, technology, engineering, and math education. And the robot that we have is all designed and built by students under um, guidance from adult mentors. How does this benefit the students' learning? This gives students an opportunity to work hands-on designing building and testing a uh, mechanical robot that's remote controlled. They get the benefit of working with people from industry who come in and give their time in the evenings and weekends to teach the kids their skills so they can build this competition robot. So the kids are getting a lot of advantage in terms of uh, math and science education, hands-on problem solving, and then one-on-one -on -one mentoring from industry professionals. Um, my name is Leslie Wu. I'm a senior this year at Skyview. and. I really like the robotics team because it allows people to do a lot of different things. Um, we have different departments on the team, so there's a marketing department, a build department, um, even a programming and competitive intelligence department. So um, I'm the leader of the marketing department and we raise $20,000 a year to go to all of our competitions. We go to two competitions, one in Seattle and one in Portland, and then we do lots of other stuff throughout the year. So um, it's really interesting to have a way to apply skills to the real world because it's actually raising that money and not, you know, a hypothetical situation like most classes are. Thank you. Let's see what's going on with Chad. Thank you, Rebecca. Here with Romel Taruk from Hudson's Bay High School. Romel, you're on the cutting edge with this wastewater treatment. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, what we're doing is we're taking a bigger project that we have actually at our school and we're making, we're expanding on one of the smaller aspects, which is the uh, rotating biological contactor. And what it does is that it, um, it aerates the water through um, a biofilm, which will actually mix the water up put enough air into it that it'll actually settle into purified water and a uh, sludge that's actually a very potent fertilizer. So it's kind of a two birds, one stone. So you have this right at Hudson's Bay right now. And what you're saying is waste goes in, fertilizer and pure water comes out. That's correct. Okay, uh, Jacob, you're a junior as well? Yes. Um, you know, as far as being uh, in school, it looks like a lot of your in school is outside of school. Can you speak to that environment, that learning environment? Where we started with um, just learning the basics in biology, then chemistry, now advanced horticulture. Um, a lot of it has been covered in school, but now we're moving on to new stuff that we have to work outside of school 
had to learn on our own, on computers, do our thing, to get the whole idea covered. Romel, have you had a glass of the water that's been treated in the plant? Yes, I actually have. On our um, bigger project scale, I've actually had the working unit drink from our um, purified tank, and it's perfectly good water. I didn't feel any symptoms, and um, the system works. Like The system is in existence, the technology's there, we just have to perfect it. Sounds like the system is working, sounds like it's working for students with the learning. Uh, we're going to kick it back out to Nathan now. Nathan? Thanks, Chad. I'm here to check out video game programming class here at Skyview High School. We are uh, we're showing off uh, games like Bricks, uh, Cage, um, Pong, and uh, Side Scroller. And we're supposed to tell you about the programs we use, like Project Fun and uh, coding with C++. Yeah, it's combined uh, sprites with maps and a whole bunch of functions, and the, uh, the, the slight little uh, error can cause for much problem solving. Yeah, we're sort of learning like advanced math, like magnitudes and vector angles and all that good stuff. So this is a math program? Uh, no, it's it's a tech program. It does have math elements like uh, lots graphing. Elements. Lots and lots of math elements. Graphing to put your characters in the right position to make your balls go in the right directions. So can we get a demo of something here? Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I can try it myself. How about yes. the big console right there? All right, battle to the death with, uh, what do we got here, Pong? It's a good game, Definitely. good game. I don't know who won, I wasn't keeping track. Man, that game of Pong was intense. Now to you, Colleen. And I'm now joined by teacher librarian Mark Ray. Mark, thanks for being with us. Thank you. We appreciate it. And first and foremost, we want to congratulate you on being named the 2012 Washington State Teacher of the Year. A huge honor. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very exciting. It's been a pretty busy month. Uh, uh, we got the announcement back on October 3rd, and uh, since then, it's been just one crazy roller coaster. What is the role that technology can play in the classroom as we head into the future? Well, technology in the old days used to be kind of thought of as a thing, and now really technology is about ways of working and habits of mind that students need to have. Um, one of the things that we, we need to do better in education is preparing students for the 21st century, and we're already now uh, well into the 21st century now, uh, 11, 12 years, and uh, there's a lot of things that students need to know to be able to be successful. Uh, things like digital citizenship, uh, the ability to separate uh, fact from fiction, uh, dealing with truthiness, um, the ability to collaborate online and work with other people using digital networks. Um, all of these things uh, have less to do with the devices and more to do with um, the way that uh, students think and work and collaborate. What was it like to pull this whole evening together? Well, this, 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 this evening was uh, the product of about four months of planning and actually technically about two years of planning because the idea uh, was hatched a couple of years ago. Um, the nice thing is that, that all of the ITS staff, uh, the curriculum staff, uh, it was a team effort uh, on the part of many people in the district. And it went really smoothly. It was amazing. I, I kept expecting people to just be running around with their hair out and, and uh, you know, crazed looks on their faces. And it really went just amazingly well. And, and it's because you know, we've got a great team, it was a team effort, and a lot of good planning went into it. So I feel really good about that. And it's great. We've got a lot of people out, at least twice as many people as we had last year. A lot of energy. It's very, it's very exciting. Excellent. Well, we appreciate you talking with us tonight, and congratulations on a very successful event again. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. And let's go now to Chad, who can tell us about another program to use mobile devices in learning. Chad? Thank you, Colleen. I'm here with Kara Bu uh, from King Elementary, and you're going to talk to us a little bit about iPods and learning. Tell us how you use those as a teacher in your classroom. We use them in lots of different ways. We use them for reading fluency. Students read into their iPods and listen back, catch mistakes, hear how they sound. Um, we're also using them for math. Um, students can practice math facts in game form. And we use them for research purposes as well. And are you finding that students are really taking to this, this type of learning where it's, it's a little bit more hands-on and technology-based and, and they're plugging into that? Of course, yes. They gravitate to it naturally. They grow up in this kind of an environment. So, yes, they do. They love it. They're engaged. They're happy to be doing whatever we ask them to do when they're using their iPods. And what kind of results are you seeing as far as 
student progress and, and improvement in the areas of, of literacy and mathematics? Um, last year we saw increases in our um, MAP assessment scores. We also saw increases in our MBA assessment scores for math. And we saw increases in especially in our intensive students in reading on Dibble scores. So Avery and Austin from King Elementary, how have the, how have the iPods really helped you? Um, they helped me with my math. In second grade, um, my math wasn't as good as it is now. Okay, so really you find that the iPods make learning math fun for you. Yeah. So um, Austin, you're in the fourth grade at King. You look like the kind of kid that maybe likes technology. Tell me about how you feel about the technology you're using there at King. I feel really happy because we're really lucky that we get to use the technology. Okay. Um, does it make, do you think that it makes your lessons, uh, it helps you learn? How does it help you learn? It helps you learn because it's fun using them at the same time as you are learning. Let me ask you this. Do either of you have an iPod at home? No. 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 So neither of you have an iPod at home, but by having that te technology at school, you're able to actually learn something that Ordinarily, you wouldn't have access to. Very cool, very cool. Thank you very much. Good luck. Nathan, back to you. So I'm here with? Miranda Hughes. I teach a 4-5 split at Eisenhower Elementary. All right, so what are you showing off here today? Um, today, I brought with me the Moby tablets that we use um, in our classroom, mostly during math. So how do the children uh, do their problems on this? Well, when I, I divide them into groups and give them a specific word problem, and then together as a group they have to show the whole problem solving process. And what the Mobies allow is for a, a chance for the different groups to show individually how they solve the problem. So as a class we can then look at four different ways of solving a problem and then talk about uh, the different strategies that we saw. And with me having the teacher board, I can go into a presenter mode where then I can write in the other boxes and underline things or circle things that the kids did and then we can, like I said, talk about different strategies for problem solving. All right, and has this already been implemented in any classes? Uh, absolutely, we've been using them almost daily in math. Has it been helping a lot? Yeah, it has. It's been really great for the kids to see other kids work. It's a huge time saver because we can see four kids work or four groups work at once rather than having one kid go up to the board, having to erase it, and then start over. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Nick, now to you. Thanks. I'm here with Jerry and Lori, who both took part in the first training session of the night. It was about Prezi. Guys, what did you learn in this session? Well, I learned that uh, there's so many things that as teachers and educators that we need to be doing for our students and Prezi is yet another tool that works collaboratively for the students and it's, it's much better than PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And they can work together as a small group or they can work individually with it. So, so big picture, what are you guys hoping to get out of tonight's event? More use of technology in the classroom, something new and innovative for my students. Mm -hmm. And how do you think that benefits kids to use you know, new technology? It allows them to be able to um, work, uh, go out into the workforce and be able to uh, have better skills when they go out into the workforce, technology-wise. And so um, do you see yourself using some of these technologies you're going to learn about tonight, hopefully in the future? Oh, yes, I do. I try to take as much as this I can because I want to be able to present to my students what is out there, what they can do, how they can better themselves. And like Jerry was saying, that we can make them better prepared for the future. Okay, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, good luck in the, the training sessions tonight. Uh, let's go out back out to uh, Colleen. One of the best examples of learning and technology in the district comes from Fort Vancouver High School. This television is showing a volleyball game being broadcast live by the Fort Sports team. It's made up of students, teachers, and volunteers. And for the first time ever this year, Fort Sports is broadcasting football and volleyball live on Comcast Channel 29. The broadcasts are as close as a student can get to being in a professional crew. That's a valuable real-world experience they can take with them right into the job market. The volleyball and football seasons are pretty much over, but Fort Sports will be back on the air live for basketball season. And there are so many different student projects here, 
and we're going to check in now with Chad for a little bit more on that. Chad? I'm here with Sam, a senior from the Vancouver School of Arts and Academics in the Recording Arts Program. Sam, tell us about what you do out there. Well, the main thing that we do is make the music of the students at our school sound good. We have all kinds of professional equipment, professional microphones, professional preamps, a lot of really specialty microphones as well, and really, really powerful computing capabilities. So you say that you make it sound, you, you make it sound better, right, with all of this professional gear. This is the industry standard that you're working with. These are not kids' toys. This is not obsolete technology. No, not at all. This is... This is actually the future of the industry standard. This is where most um, like music producers and recording musicians are going. This is because of the compactness of the Euphonics consoles, the MC Control and the MC Mix, and the flexibility and um, expandability of those units. Excellent. Now, I don't have a very good singing voice, Sam. Do you think that through the use of technology, you could make me the next uh, Justin Bieber or something? Or let me, let me rephrase that. Could you make me the next Steven Tyler? Well, we can do a lot, but there's nothing that can replace the sound of someone's voice. Like, you can be as out of tune as you want to be, and I can put you in tune, but there's not really anything I can do that will fix the sound of your voice. You have to have no matter what computing software plugins, autotune plugins we use, it always comes down to the artists and their voice. All right, great. Uh, so I guess that, that, that dream is shattered. Thank you, Sam. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, Sam, good luck to you in the future. We're going to head back up to the main stage with Colleen. Colleen? I'm here with Rob Harsh, who has been key in helping to integrate the Bring Your Own Device program here in the Vancouver Public School District. And uh, Rob, thanks for being with us. Thank you. So tell us a little bit what this program is all about. BYOD is uh, a program that started this year at Alki. It's also at River and Skyview. And basically what it is is kids, students are allowed to bring their own devices such as an iPad, iTouch, even a laptop. And whenever we're doing something in the classroom and we say, all right, you know, this might be a good time to look up some information, help one another out with that, the kids are allowed to get out those devices and utilize them in a way that fits the lesson. One of the things that I am doing in my classroom is I have an application called Confer. And what this allows me to do is I give an assignment, say, on uh, subject predicates I collect, the, I collect the handouts, correct them, and then I can categorize the kids that need extra help. Um, I'm also able to go in and figure out kids that are really strong in that, what, what's my next step for them? What do I need to do in the classroom that will help make them jump up a, to another level? So this application has been really just paramount in helping me kind of utilize um, what they know, take what they know, and uh, teach some lessons. Excellent. Well, we appreciate you talking with us tonight. As Nick mentioned near the beginning of the show, Vancouver Public Schools have adopted a new math curriculum for all levels. Parents at this event are learning about the changes tonight. Here are some of the big points. There are two programs one for the elementary students and one for middle and high school students. They give common standards for teachers to eliminate any confusion. For students, the programs offer more context so kids understand how math can be used in everyday life. And here's the most exciting part. All of the textbooks are online and are supported by tutoring videos that are available to every student and parent. To get access to this material, just talk to your child's teacher. Let's see what parents think about tonight's event. Nick Vole is standing by. Nick? Thanks, Colleen. I'm here with Gail, a parent. Uh, Gail, have you enjoyed this event so far? Yes, I have. Uh, what's been the most interesting thing that you've seen tonight? Uh, the most interesting, just the fact that there's so, much, so many new ways to learn now. Completely different from the way I learned. Was there any one exhibit that just sort of went wow for you? Yeah, the Skyhawk News. And what was so cool about that one? Uh, that's my daughter's school, and that's her class, and I enjoyed watching it. I want to thank you for talking to us, and uh, thanks for coming to the event. Thank you. All right. Okay. Colleen, back to you.
Thanks, Nick. Not every child learns in the same way. And with that in mind, Vancouver Public Schools is using technology to remove barriers to learning. Chad is standing by now to show us how. Chad? I'm here with Jody, and she is a speech pathologist for the school district. Jody, tell us about all of the gadgets that you use to support student learning. Okay, this is just an example of what we have to check out for students that are in our district. Starting with the real extreme low tech over here, we have a little Mac, and it's basically a single button system. So you program a word or a phrase, the student taps that, and that allows them to communicate where otherwise they wouldn't be able to. The three button system is essentially the same thing. It just starts to teach choice making and gives the students more options. These are really quick and easy to customize on the go. So you can use this for calendar, or for a storybook, or for a math lesson. For example. So, th so these are relatively low tech gadgets on the, on the right end that are helping students with with extreme uh, difficulty communicating to actually communicate. Yes. What is the you know when you see those students able to communicate? What is the feeling you get and what is the feeling they get? Uh, well, a lot of times you'll see students that are struggling with uh, com any kind of communication. You'll see extreme behaviors start to go down because now they have a voice. They don't have to hit you to get your attention. They don't have to throw their book to get your attention. Or they can tell you for the first time that they don't like orange juice, they want grape juice. And that's pretty huge. And I've gotten goosebumps, I've cried. <laughs> everything you can imagine when you see the power that they start to feel. Such a valuable resource for the students, a great tool for you to use. Thank you very much, Jody. You, very appreciate pleasure. your time. Nathan? All right, Melissa, could you please explain this program for us and how we use it? Yeah, um, this is a, a very simple augmentative communication device. So it's an application that you can purchase through iTunes and put on an iPad, and it becomes, it turns your iPad into a communication device. So for kiddos that are nonverbal or have very limited language skills, um, this is a great option for them. It's also a much more cost-effective option because most communication devices cost between two and twelve thousand dollars, whereas this one uh, costs about eight hundred. So total. So yeah. Uh, could you uh, show us exactly how this works? Sure. Um, for some of our kids, we use them for different purposes. So the student pushes what they need or what they want, um, and they create these sentences. And then we know exactly what they're looking for. So we can also tell exactly what the kid knows through these. Um, not exactly, but we can tell if the kid knows and has a bigger vocabulary than we initially um, thought because they're actually telling us now as opposed to just sitting there and not having the words to tell us what they know or what they need. All right, well, uh, thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you. And I'm joined here now with Dr. Steve Webb, Superintendent of Vancouver Public Schools. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Marlene, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, yeah. too. So what are you thinking tonight? What, uh, how's it going so far? Well, it's bigger, it's better, it's bolder than our first showcase last year. And obviously, there's quite a bit of energy in the room, lots of enthusiasm for the way that we're leveraging technology as a teaching, learning, productivity, communication, and collaboration tool. And, Obviously, kids and staff are terribly excited about our vision for the use of technology uh, to tr transform uh, learning experiences for kids. So it isn't just about spending money on iPods and iPads. You want to make sure that those learning tools are used in a value-add way in uh, positively impacting student learning in classrooms. I think there's some really cool ways in which we are leveraging technology for learning experiences for kids. And obviously, if you spend any time out in these booths with kids, you get a real sense that kids are absolutely thrilled and motivated, absolutely thrilled and motivated to have access to these kinds of resources. And as an educator, how does it make you feel to see that kind of um, enthusiasm just absolutely resonate? Prideful. You know, I mean, really, if we can spark an interest and connect kids to learning through technology, uh, we've made a difference in the kind of experiences that we're creating in classrooms for kids, and that's cool. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Webb. We appreciate you being with us here tonight. Thank you, Colleen. I'm here with Carol Patrick from Ogden Elementary School. Carol, tell us about the program that you're running there and how students are using technology to uh, support learning. 
Well, my students go um, every month to our Burnt Bridge Creek. We do water quality tests, okay? And they learn about a watershed, they learn about um, the ecosystem, macroinvertebrates, and they share their data that they accumulate for pH, dissolved oxygen, with a partner class in New Mexico. So I have a partner class in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, where my kids share our data and they share their data back. And so they have a communication back and forth. Um, every couple of weeks we go onto the wiki and explain what we've been doing, uh, what tests we've been uh, monitoring at, at our creek, um, what we're finding, our concerns, um, what, what looks good, what our data is telling us, um, and they're explaining their watershed, which is completely different in New Mexico. And, um, and the, between the students, they're communicating back and forth, and I monitor the site with them. That's really amazing. So uh, the students are really probably making some friendships and relationships uh, mm -hmm. through science. Yeah, sounds like. absolutely. So we've got technology, we've got science, plus we have salmon in the classroom, which New Mexico students don't have salmon over there. So they're asking lots of questions. So my kids are actually teaching the New Mexico students about salmon and how salmon travel to the ocean and back and, um, and that we don't have salmon at Burbridge Creek right now. And we're hoping, we've been doing this for about three years, we're hoping that the salmon will come back through the restoration efforts and things like that of the students. Right, absolutely, absolutely. We planted at the creek uh, several years in a row. Their science has a purpose, so. All right, that's great. Thank you so All much right. for your time. Okay. Rebecca, out to you. What is the technology that you're presenting tonight? Uh, we're using Google Earth to um, explore volcanoes, and I think this year we'll also use it to explore watersheds. How does this benefit the children's learning? Um, I noticed that they were really excited, of course, to sit in front of the computer and, and fly from volcano to volcano and to see the size difference of the volcanoes, like Mount St. Helens versus Hawaii versus like Mount Tabor, um, was really exciting and a lot more interesting when they could touch the computer versus like looking at a textbook or a picture book or a PowerPoint, various ways that I've used in the past. Thank you. You're welcome. Take it away, Nick. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm here with Gary and Shirley, and you guys came out to the event. Why? Just to see what was going on in Vancouver as far as technology goes. And how, how about you, Shirley? Yeah, we got this flyer about the Vancouver School District, and it had a little thing about this event. We had absolutely no idea that this was as big as it is or as exciting as it is. or I mean, we're just bowled over, really. So. What's been your favorite uh, uh, exhibit so far? Oh, either the Photoshop or the video. I'm a Mac guy, so uh, we basically went through looking for Macs to start with. And, and how about you, Shirley? Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it amazed you? I mean, you kind of touched on it there a little bit. How much technology and how much the classroom has changed since all of us, I mean, I haven't been out of school that long, but it's totally different than even when I was there. Has it surprised you by how much things have really changed? They didn't have digital when I was in school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the way they the way they've stepped up to the plate and brought in some of the latest and greatest stuff. Surely, what do, what do you think about that? Well, if the kids don't have technology now, they're going to be lost when they get out in the business world, and it doesn't matter what their what their business is in the world. I mean, technology is going to be intersecting more and more and more, and um, if the school districts don't get behind promoting this kind of technology in the classroom, the kids are doomed. Got to do it. Got to do it. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us. I, I hope you had fun. All right, thanks a lot. And Chad and Colleen, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Nick. And what an incredible evening. Yeah, really amazing to see some of the students working with the technology a lot different than when we were back in school. Yeah, a lot has definitely changed in terms of technology. We want to thank all of our reporters and the other students and volunteers who have come out tonight to help put together our show. Thanks, guys. And thanks to you for watching and for supporting Vancouver Public Schools. Now, if you'd like to see more on how technology is being used in the classroom, just go to youtube.com slash vansdtv and click on the We Learn link on the right-hand side of the page. I'm Colleen Nelson. And I'm Chad Young. From us and the rest of our team, so long from We Learn Technology Showcase 2011.
This program is being provided by the 15 members of the Vancouver Educational Telecommunications Consortium, TV Etc.